Hello and welcome to Timber and Terra. I am Glenn and this is my playground. Or, as some might refer to it, my backyard. So um, I have been working here off and on through the last month or two, sort of clearing trees along the uh, rock wall. There's a rock wall there. There's one here that comes right next to us. And then there's one over there. So I cleared those. Uh, the deciduous trees, I'm leaving the softwood trees, uh, but I'm clearing the deciduous trees because uh, there's a lot of them and they get in the way of the view. There's our current house, but we do plan to put a house back there, otherwise known as our retirement house. Uh, sometime in uh, the future, I don't know, three to five year sort of time frame. So I wanted to, to sort of establish the view. I think I may take down some of this rock wall and make this mobile field. But, um, so I'm still working on clearing that because I do need to take some more of these trees down which are interrupting uh, the left-hand part of that view where the, the last mountain sort of dips below um, sort of the near tree line. So this will either be uh, firewood, the, the nice stuff here, some of the smaller stuff like you can see right there. I'm just gonna cut up and leave. Uh, this wood here, uh, th this area, I'm going to let grow up into woods. Uh, it used to be field. There's another rock wall there. On the other side of that rock wall used to be just pasture. Uh, this was an active farm, I think, most recently back into the 60s. It was a dairy farm, I think, beyond that, like hundreds of years ago. Uh, 100 or 200 years ago, I think it was a sheep, sheep farm. So that's why I'm going to just leave this stuff here. Any of the tops that I have over there, I'm going to pick up with a grapple, which I have yet to purchase, that I'll uh, worry about that in the springtime. I do have my tractor, all my stuff is on there, my chainsaws, my, uh, you know, gas, oil, that sort of stuff. But the other thing is handy, since I have that instead of my four-wheeler to carry my stuff around, is I have the winch. So instead of having all these piles of wood that I need to pick up with my log trailer scattered around where you can see and there's a bunch more over there. Um, the small ones I can move by hand but the big ones I sort of have been laying uh, just where they fell. But now with the winch, um, you know, this red maple here, the gray birch over there, uh, that is a, a cherry tree I believe, that big one, then I can use the winch and haul them and just make one bigger pile. So let's work on that. Oh, before I go any further, uh, this is a slightly different subject, has to do with uh, cedar silviculture. Uh, I've been spending a lot of time on previous videos last, uh, last late winter, early spring. Um, beyond the gray birch there is a, a cedar stand and beyond that further is more cedar stand that I'll work on this winter. But one of the things is very difficult for cedar to germinate. But when I was here, I noticed relatively young cedar trees. So I need to put a fence around these because one of the reasons it's difficult for cedar to germinate is that it is a favorite food in the late spring of deer. So something like that uh, could likely be eaten up by deer. So I'm going to put a fence around it. One to keep the deer out and the other is to make sure I remember it's there and don't step on it or drive over it or something like that. So I'm really excited to see that, uh, that little bit of cedar regeneration.
So not only does it work well to consolidate these into one pile, but dragging them over here like that actually caused it to turn. So sort of unearths the uh, branches that were buried in the snow that, this, uh, that I still need to cut off. Uh, so I'll cut this into 16 foot lengths and then work on the next bunch. That uh, gray cedar's cut, uh, that gray birch is coming down, uh, not because it's in the way. I don't think that's going to interrupt any view, but it's just a junk tree. It just takes up space. I'd much rather have something else like fir growing there instead of gray birch. Oftentimes when I'm cutting a clump like this, these are three uh, sizable red maple logs all growing from the same root. Uh, they'll often break apart when I uh, cut them, so it's actually quite rare for me to be able to to cut it and, and fell it uh, having these left intact. So what I'll do with this, it could be when I have, grab it with the grapple, it might break these off or they're straight enough. It's not like they really go off in every which direction. I'll just put it on my firewood table like that. The first cut I'll make for two feet is there and then then they'll be separate pieces. And then I'll sp split that on the log splitter. I did notice a couple small fur seedlings, which is why I want to get rid of this thing. I'd much rather have those grow. And I don't, I don't get rid of all the red maple. Red maple's a nice tree. That's one that I left. There are a couple other ones growing off from it that I cut off. A big branch that I cut off. Smaller one. So, I mean, I'll let this grow. It'll either be firewood, it could be a good saw log. In the future, it'll produce maple syrup or sap. Uh, red maple uh, produces sap, just like any of the, the maples, the Acer gen genus, genus? Uh, in the Latin thing. So any of the family of maples will produce maple syrup or ma uh, sap for maple syrup. Sugar maple is the most uh, sugar rich, most concentration of sugar. Red maple, silver maple, there are probably some others. Uh, the other thing, um, sort of on the forestry side of things, uh, silviculture is, I noticed when I was out here last, is this nice white pine. Uh, this, the, and this is the reason that I'm gonna let these all grow around it. Uh, let the, the shade exist. Uh, it's because of the white pine weevil. And I'll show you that what the white pine weevil does. In a, a white pine tree that's out in the open like this one grew, that leader stem is very thick, is very healthy, is growing fast, 
but the white pine weevil is an insect that uh, buries its, I'm not sure of the exact sequence, but it uh, buries its eggs in that, uh, in that leader of white uh, pine and uh, it kills it. Not sure if it's, uh, I think they just chew around it and then they stop the nutrients going to it. But what happens uh, in a more mature tree like this is you see a bend in the tree there, uh, there. Every one of these was the white pine weevil killed the top and a leader from the side took over. That's why you may notice several uh, leaders, major leaders in uh, white pine trees. Sometimes they'll they'll be uh, you know six or eight feet off the ground these double leaders because of the white pine weevil and and several different stems grow up but one way to deal with the white pine weevil is to have them grow in their early years uh, in some in some shaded areas even though this is very long it's not that big around so Growing in a more shaded area, what that does is that reduces the size of this and that's just not as attractive uh, to the insect as a larger uh, stem would be, say, growing out in the open. We can see here that the leader died. For some reason, it could have been a white pine weevil during that year. It could have been something else. It could have been physical damage. But um, this was the growth last year. Oh, this might have been the growth. This is the growth... Uh, this is the growth last, growth last year, which is, it's like two feet. Uh, the year before, the year before that, each of these major sp spirals uh, represents a year of growth. But this, um, because it's so young and just a single leader took off after it, uh, this will be fine. Um, in fact, when it's a mature tree, you'll never, probably never know that uh, that sort of defect happened. Uh, but I'm hoping that uh, that this tree will continue as a single stem, not be not be impacted by the white pine weevil with the shade that's around it. So a white pine tree that looks like that, with lots of large limbs, multiple tops, sort of crooks, offsets, is never going to be a high quality uh, log, saw log. They do make nice. Uh, end tables, um, stools, things like that. If you cut them two inch, live edge. There's a lot of character with all those large knots, a lot of uh, grain characteristics, but the traditional uh, saw log uh, will have minimal defects and be nice and straight. And that sort of a tree does not fit that. That's why I carry that, I guess. 
attach it. Couple things you might have noticed the uh, the handful of smaller birch over there that didn't make their way with the rest of them. Uh, it's oftentimes hard, at least for me, to to wrap a chain around them uh, without them getting loose like that. One of them came, the one that I actually choked. Uh, my success rate was trying to bundle small ones like that. I probably bet maybe 500, maybe 650 on a good day. So I did leave uh, the red maple there that I mentioned. There's another one here that I sort of trimmed. Some other ones that were growing around the base of it. So that may or may not uh, become a good tree in the future. The other thing, a lot of these, it's hard to tell if this one, I don't see any marks, but a uh, young red maple, for whatever reason, tend to be a favorite for deer and moose to, uh, to knock off the felt from their antlers. A lot of the a lot of the red maples around here have this sort of a scar. Generally, if it's down here, it's a deer. If it's way up there, it's it's a moose. I don't know why they picked the red maple. So over there is where we just were. I'm actually standing on top of this rock wall that basically sort of runs east and west. I've cut a bunch of those small ones there out of the way. This is an elm. I'm gonna leave that. I just really like elms, they're such a nice looking tree, but if for some reason it doesn't look good off, out of our front window, then we can always take it down later. So this is a cherry, this is coming down. It's going to go that way into the other field, that's why I'm over here now, because it would not easily go the other way, not without a lot of work, and even then it would probably not go that way. There's that pine over there that I'm sort of trying to preserve uh, the hardwood trees right around it. So this is not a normal notch. I think it's sort of an East Coast thing to normally have the notch on the top. Um, there's a name for it, I think a Humboldt or something like that. 
with the notches on the bottom the ad uh, the advantage here at least the only one that I'm aware of is that it sort of preserves the entire tree that you're cutting particularly if you have a log so you don't have a notch cut out of it but the reason I'm not cutting all the way to the ground is because I have this I forgot to bring my larger saw with a larger bar with a 16 inch bar this would be difficult to cut so I'm just gonna cut it here I had cut this one off I guess years ago many years ago because it's rotted but it was clearly a cut you can see the hinge right there I think there might be a difference in how the tree fells or falls with the notch on the bottom versus the top but I can't tell you what it is but we'll see what it looks like seem to fall the way any other tree falls. I did break the top off that. I wanted to take that one down first, but it was sort of engulfed in the branches too much for me to easily take that down. So that's probably where I would have cut it anyhow as far as usable firewood. The larger part of the stem, the top is a bit too small to worry about. This actually looks like nice wood. So I think I'll take the trunk of this, which is straight to here cut it as a log there's a dead branch there well a dead knot it's a dead branch but in lumber it'll look like a dead knot maybe even cut it up to here and have it sawn into lumber maybe two inch lumber i don't do a lot of it but i'd like to in my retirement years which is uh, what i mentioned earlier with uh, sort of the pasture pine if you will that has the white pine weevil um you know two inch thick live edge um, tabletops, coffee tables, things like that. Alright, well let's uh, cut this mess up into sort of usable firewood lengths and we'll keep on going. Well, that worked out nice. I wasn't planning on it grabbing that, uh, the arched piece there, curved branch, but that worked out well. Uh, that I actually cut uh, several weeks ago and it was on the other side of the rock wall. So easier to pull it this way than I guess over there. I forgot to do it when I was on the other side. 
So I think that'll do it for now for the big ones. Uh, I'm going to cut some of these smaller ones here. That's uninteresting, so I don't need to video that. Um, I may get into those bigger trees, but I haven't decided that yet. Somewhere in there is the house site. There's some stakes there, but that just marks the road uh, where I have some, uh, some culverts. Because when snow covered, I can't tell where the road is until I make tracks and I don't want to go off on the side. So I think that will do it for now. Um, we'll continue this project if there's anything interesting to, uh, to concern ourselves with. But stay tuned for the next one. I appreciate you watching this one. Thank you very much.